John, what would you like to add to our collection? I am going to be adding complete world knowledge. As I am the author of a book of complete world knowledge full of amazing trivia and fascinating true facts that I made up, I made a point of not doing any research at all. <laughs> but occasionally I just couldn't help it. I would be walking by a table and there'd be an open book of actual facts. I'd glance at it, I'd learn something, I'm sorry. <laughs> Many of these books would be encyclopedia. Now it's a very, very old idea that we could put all of complete world knowledge into a single volume or series of volumes. It's been around for millennia. It's so long, in fact, that it makes you wonder why we haven't gotten rid of that idea yet. Because it's absurd on its face. For one, it presumes uh, that we can know everything. For two, it presumes that we can know anything. For three, it presumes that we can get it all. And all of these things are impossible. It's a very arrogant idea, and that's why I think humans like it so much. <laughs> the first encyclopedia that we still have copies of was by Pliny the Elder, who wrote it in around 77 AD, called Natural History, in which he tried to collect all knowledge known to that point. I paraphrase here, but Pliny was famous for saying, the one thing we can be certain of is that nothing is certain, which is a rather strange and defeatist thing to say if you've just written a whole encyclopedia of world knowledge, which is why when you look up Pliny in his encyclopedia, you see a picture of him hanging himself in despair. <laughs> In Scotland, they decided to form the Encyclopedia Britannica, which was started in 1768 on a firm basis of scholarship and experts writing the articles. The encyclopedia pretty quickly went to American hands in 1902, and they started shortening the articles for American audiences, which I thought you might find pleasing to know <laughs> and make you feel good. Of course, now the Wikipedia is the most popular encyclopedia in the English language. It is where most of everything I just said was sourced. So, <laughs> and as it is edited entirely by the people who use it, whether they be scholars or not, it does essentially obliterate the encyclopedia as an idea for it indeed can potentially contain everything. It can be updated in real time. And finally, it is just as uncertain as Pliny long promised. So that is what I'm giving to the museum, since I think complete world knowledge might be useful to you. Thank wow. you. That... How many volumes do you think it'll be? Infinite volumes. Do you have room for it? No, but it, might, it can't be infinite, can it? Eventually, you would be able to find everything out. Well, so I've... it can't be necessarily infinite. What I've discovered in my own career, there actually is more world knowledge being generated at every moment, and I endeavor to learn it, and when I don't have time, I make it up. So, yes, I mean, as long as there are still people generating knowledge, there will be more world knowledge for you to store. Look, if it's going to be a problem for you, I can hold it in my own basement. <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking. I mean, do and you I'll think... send over a volume from time to time. What about everything that's worth knowing? How long a book would that be, do you think? Well, it's about, well, let's see, my book here is <laughs> 254 pages in the paperback edition. But when you start asking things like what is worth knowing, of course, I mean, that's a massive editorial decision. That was the reason that uh, Britannica is constantly, since the, its inception, was under attack for being biased or for being insensitive or for being wrong. We were researching when you suggested you might yeah. have the complete uh, world knowledge in the museum and uh, turned up this wonderful piece of information about the Shah of Persia, a guy called Fath Ali, he was given a complete set of the Encyclopedia Britannica, which he read from cover to cover. And after this feat, he extended his long list of royal titles to include most formidable lord and master of the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very impressed, but I, I need to know a little bit more about the size of the... I mean, do you, is it in a huge well, tower or... First just... of all, Charlotte is talking about putting rainstorms in your building. Well, I can, I can imagine. I don't understand why this is such a hang-up for you people. <laughs> so we... Like suddenly I'm responsible for the physical capacity of your fictional museum? <laughs> can I just say, I do yes. like encyclopedias. So you must like them. Oh, I love them quite yeah. a bit. I yeah. love them because they're so flawed, because mm. they're so silly and weird. You know, the third edition of Encyclopedia Britannica claimed there was no gravity. But they fixed it 25 years later. Yeah. <laughs> well, John, we obviously, we graciously accept the complete uh, yeah. world Jeez. knowledge in the museum. Uh, how big a room do we need now? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, big hand for the complete world knowledge.